What? 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 Well, hello there, my friends. Uh, so today, I'm going to show you guys how to make your wife really mad and use some cooking supplies to clean your transmission parts. So what we're doing is getting the valve body gasket material off of the separator plate. So I'm doing this by boiling the separator plate. So this gasket material is kind of like caked on there. It comes off pretty easy in some spots and not so easy in others. So what I'm doing is just kind of boiling it. I did a large section already, but you can see this actually, I'm just using a plastic spatula. 10 cents boy, and this thing comes off pretty, pretty decent in some spots. But you can see here it's like completely stuck on and it's not gonna come off. It's like hardened on there. So let it sit, let it boil for a little bit. It's gonna soften it off to it's gonna soften it up enough to just kinda peel it off. So just going through and doing this. And then we can put the new one on there. It actually works pretty good. So I'll probably have to flip it a couple times, but even the even the steam that was coming up loosened up this whole section. So worked pretty good. All right, so that's about it. I'd say it was pretty successful. It came off pretty nice. It does look dirty, but I did go over it uh, with some dish soap and kind of cleaned everything off. So it's smooth and it's clean. It just looks like there's still some stuff on there, but there's really, really not. All right, so we have the new gaskets here. There's actually two gaskets and they all line up pretty good, but there are some differences. So I wanted to show you this section right here. You can see the top gasket has some holes where the bottom gasket doesn't. And if we flip it over, same thing here. There's a hole in the top gasket making a little oval, and then there's two smaller holes. So what I want to do is verify that this is the right side. So I put this gasket on the right side. So if you can see, there's a little hole there and there's a couple other ones right there. And as we move across, we'll find them. So I'm gonna take this thing, flip it over and line this up, with the big hole so I know it's in the right spot. And you can see in this spot as I move it away, that's right where that little hole is. So I know that this is the gasket for this side. <clears throat> and then if I flip this over, then I take the other gasket, I put it over the top here. You see this one, you have the little outline around these two holes, and that's where this one's gonna go. So this gasket is for this side, the other gasket's for the other side. So what I'm gonna do now is take some end, uh, some transmission assembly lube and I'll put some on the bottom of this gasket and stick it on, do the same to the other side. So I'm just using this uh, transmission assembly lube and I put a couple dabs on, you can see all around the separator plate. So now I'll take the, the gasket and I'm just gonna use this to stick it down. So the, the assembly lube will hold it in position until I'm able to flip it over on top of the valve body and then screw it back down. So I'll do that. So now you can see it's kinda, it's attached, it's not going anywhere. Good stuff. So I'll do the same thing, just kinda jam two fingers in, get them lubed up. That's it? That's, that's it? What, you want me to jam more fingers in? No. <laughs> just thinking that's not enough. Or is that the wrong order? You lube it up and then jam it in? <laughs> I don't know what you're trying to get at here. Come on, you're making me wiggle. <laughs> See? One finger, not enough lube, makes you wiggle. <laughs> All right, so we'll do this. And I'm gonna take the other gasket. Just 
stick it over and this should be ready for disappointment don't mind the hostages in the background okay so my wife was questioning me uh, is that enough she, thinking that I had to cover the whole plate I'm not trying to cover the whole plate to use that to stick it on there it's just to hold it in place while I'm jostling this thing around so what I'm going to do now is I'll go ahead and bolt this thing down to the valve body, but I want to have something that's holding this gasket in place. So while I'm trying to put the valve body up into the transmission and I'm tipping it back and forth, this gasket is, isn't going to be sliding around and shifting out of place. So that's what the purpose of the assembly lube was, just to stick it in there so it's not moving around or shifting and then getting out of position or twisting or doing anything weird because I can literally just take this thing and that those gaskets aren't going to move around and the position is still fine. So if you're watching the other video when I said check balls these are what I was talking about if you're not familiar with this there's these little steel balls inside here that go in specific positions so they're little like check valve balls they're called check balls so and they're all around there. That's why I was saying I didn't want to tip it around. But I'm gonna go ahead, kind of clean this surface off with my, um, you know, techniques. And then we'll slap this thing on there. So now the the bottom gasket will be held in place. But even like I'm as I'm shifting it around. If that assembly lube wasn't on there, the gasket would be moving out of position and I'd be constantly worried about what's going on here. So I know that the thing's not going to move around. So I'm going to take these three T30 Torx bolts and then use my torque wrench. Torque them down to spec, just like the factory would do. Okay, so I got the valve body up now. I just kind of hand threaded in a few bolts holding this thing in there up in place. So there's going to be some differences in the bolts going back in. This one here has a 10 millimeter bolt head. And there's one underneath here that has a shorter bolt than the rest of them. And one back here is for the little detent lever. So I'll go through and I'll show you those. So here's the three I'm talking about. This one is kind of a, a longer bolt than the regular ones. And it has a 10 millimeter bolt head. This one has an eight mil, but it's shorter. Shorter than the rest, the regular ones. And this one here I just left in the little detent lever. So I'll go through and I'll put those in there first. So thread in the 10 mil and then I'll hand thread in this little shorty and I'm going to zip this thing in there just to get it out of the way. And then the next one is going to be this little detent lever. So this is actually what's going to decide the shift points. One thing you want to make sure of that's really important is to make sure this little lever here is inside the slot on this manual valve. So this is the, the shifter selector lever. And this is the little detent lever. So when you should go through the gears, this is what holds it into position. And then this is what moves the manual valve back and forth. So this little valve will change the, the manual hydraulic fluid passages as you move it in and out when you change gears. So very important to make sure that this thing is inside this little slot, otherwise, you ain't doing nothing. All right, so I'm gonna do everything pretty much in reverse order. Now from here. All right, so I'm gonna put this reverse servo back in. And this little guy here goes towards the front of the truck. For which position that goes back in. Again, these are just eight millimeter bolts, eight millimeter head. All 
All right, so next I'm ready to put the solenoid pack up. So I'm gonna make sure I get the plate up there and the solenoid pack. There's gonna be seven T30 bolt heads, and then there's going to be an eighth one over here that is a shorter bolt. I also took some assembly lube, same stuff I was using before, and then put it around these little O-rings on the plug section. So I'm gonna take this thing and push it up into the hole. I'm going to take the short one, stick the short one back here, and you'll see it on the side of the solenoid pack. There's like a little a tab with a hole on it sticking out the side. I'll kind of get that plate snugged up by hand and I'm just gonna start these things. I'm gonna snug them down until all of them are in but seven of these. Don't get all freaked out by that impact. I, it's a really light, I have it on a really light setting, so I'm going back over this by hand and they were still, still loose by hand, just for reference. So follow the, follow the torque specs. That's what I'm doing, as you can tell, right? Hell yeah, I'm not, I'm not really going by the torque specs. I'm just, Kind of putting them in there, just hand tight. This is a vehicle for me. I don't really care if it works or not. Uh, I don't think that the torque spec would be the reason it's not working. So if it doesn't work, it's another issue. And I'm not really going to be all that upset about it if it doesn't work. But if you, this is your daily driver and you're working on this because you need it to run or you're trying to make this work, follow the torque specs if you're planning on putting some miles on it. I don't really care. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to go put it back in. I'm going to what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull this little gasket out. You can see the little O-ring. You can see a little red ring in there. There's a new one that came on the filter, so I'm going to pop this thing out and then I'm ready to put the filter back up. And then we can put the pan back on. You can see the little rubber gasket that was on there that's what was stuck in there before so this is the filter I'm going to put the filter back up and it sure filter goes in nice bolts go in nice filter just says two bolts same eight millimeter heads filters on now I can go ahead and I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the pan on and then I got to go on the other side and put the the wire harness into the top plug for the solenoid pack but while I'm down here like I said I'm gonna put the the pan back on Ooh, look at that should have turned the light on. Got the. All right, so let's grab the pan. So I'm gonna make sure the pan goes on the right way. That'll probably be in my best interest. Let me know what you guys think. 
leave it in the comments. So I'm gonna try to go up and down, the opposite of how I put it on. So there was a comment. Yep. So Richard, if you're watching, you were right. So I think when I went, when I did it before, I went, I was trying to go down. Or how the hell did I do that? I think I was trying, yeah, I was trying to go forward like this. And he said go up, forward, and then back down. So yep, that would have worked a lot better. So Richard, I'll give you that one. So I'm just going to make sure they got proper gasket positioning as I get all these things lined up before I tighten this down. Seems like it's lining up pretty decent. And then I'm going to have to remember to go back through it. I'm going to change this, change this drain plug out because I'm getting a new drain plug. So... Yeah, I'll go through and I'll get all these back in there, and then I'll come back. So I'm going to get the fluid in. I'm just going to use the transmission, Mark on 5 fluid and one of these little fluid pumpers and then I don't have the special fitting on there but what I'm using is a vacuum fitting from uh, my Mighty Vac that I have for bleeding brakes uh, but there is a fitting you can thread right in there and it kind of works the same way just plugs right in there you pump the fluid up and then it'll actually run it and get the fluid to stay in there so I'll show you what I'm going to do I'm going to pump this thing and I'm going to pump probably about five quarts in there and then this the, the truck is on jack stands right now but it's actually up at an angle so when I actually run it and try to get the right fluid level I'm gonna put it on the ground until then. that's it for this one guys so what I did there was I pulled that center plug out and just made sure that there wasn't any excess that was draining out I think I actually need to put like another quarter or two in there because I should see what I want to see is uh, a stream coming out and then the stream stopping so I know it was over full and then gets to the right point so it probably needs a little bit more fluid in it but right now what I'm doing is resetting the PCM. So I'm just taking the positive and negative leads and touching those together. I'll do that for about 15 minutes. Reset the computer and then I'll take it for a drive and let it relearn all the shift points and all that junk. So we'll do that in another video. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.